My name is Jim Keaveney, and I'm a musician, songwriter, guitar player, and I live in far west Texas, what is known as uh, Turlingua Ranch, well within the limits of uh, the Chihuahuan Desert. This is a Larrabee Parlor. BC, British Columbia. This is my second one. The desert kind of eats guitars. I mean, you can take really good care of the guitar in the desert if you want to, but it's tricky. It's small, it sounds really good. Uh, it feels great, the action's great, and there's not even a, you know, a truss rod in it or nothing. But it puts up at the desert pretty good, so. This is, uh, this is my baby. But yeah, it's got a nice little chime to it, you know. So that's a deal on that. All right, it's recording whenever you're ready. All right. mother, I know, was very adamant about all of us. Uh, I, I got seven siblings, it's, uh, there's eight, eight of us, eight kids. <clears throat> a little bit of a Brady Bunch thing going on, you know? And, uh, and so she, she made us all uh, take uh, classical piano lessons. So we were introduced to music that way. My, mother's, my mother likes all kind of music, but she's very fascinated with uh, uh, classical music. So I, I grew up listening to a lot of classical music. Uh, Mozart was probably like, you know, what Jimi Hendrix is to me, like, you know, Mozart is to my mom or sort of thing. <laughs> but, uh, so I, 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 by the time I was 17, I knew I was, I was gonna do music. And uh, I guess I was right, because I'm still doing it, I'm 44 now, so. So, and then it just kind of evolved. <laughs> I was, I was rearing to go out into the world, if you will. So I, I just went out in the most minimalistic way I could you know, imagine where I didn't need anything. So I was just backpacking guitar. By then I was already starting to write songs and, uh, and I just wanted to just see the country that I lived in. Not, not, not work or anything like that, just build, survive on uh, practically nothing, money-wise and uh, material items wise and stuff so I wanted to use my wits like uh, I, I felt like everything was already set up for you like the, the, the red carpet's kind of rolled out like you do this and now you go here and people are telling you where to go and stuff I just wanted to go on my own path and just see see where it took me I just took what was important to me which is guitar and then some few items in my bag and then and hit the road and uh and then and one, of the, one of the things he had to do when you, when you did that was, was hitchhike and, or, or, or get on a freight train or something because it's free travel. I think it was May, May of 92 and I, I left North Dakota and I hitchhiked up to Oregon and we jumped a couple of trains too on the way, which I thought was really fun. There was a certain mischievousness to it that I really liked, and just something about getting on a train and then sneaking on a train and getting away with it, and next thing you know, you're flying through the countryside, you know, enjoying the countryside on a nice summer day. You know, life couldn't really be any better for me after growing up being told what to do your whole life, you know. This in, uh, I'm guessing, <laughs> Port Bolivar, Texas. I remember laying in the bed. Uh, I was being put up by some friends, a retired shrimper and his son, Curtis. Uh, I remember thinking, I gotta write this down quick while it's still fresh, because it was still, I don't know, maybe five months ago. We took this trip. All right, this is Jim Keefe, Eugene to Yuma, take one.
Making way from Eugene to Yuma. Thought we'd try by train. Out in Oregon, I met like minds uh, that were doing the same thing, that were either my age or a little older. They were all very encouraging to me. They, were, they all made me feel like whenever, because I, I was very shy, and they always made me feel like every, every, every time I'd finally get up the nerve to sing a song, especially something I was, I was pinning, you know, and, uh, and they would always be like, Oh, Jimmy, that was great, you know, oh my God, you know, great, you know, oh, we love that, you know, cool, you know. And it, and it was, it was like, that's what I needed at that time. West, man. Through a golden valley, sleeping in an alley, Bakersfield. I generally just use a C harp. Just, just I guess it's just my minimal uh, approach at things. But um, I, I used to keep it. I used to keep a, an A harp around. I just never really used it, so I just generally use a C harp. So a lot of my, my guitar friends that I like to you know pick guitar with, they um, they kind of got a joke. They're like, "What's key is it going to be in it?" And and some of the it's it's the key of Kivney. So they mean C, because I play a lot of, I play most of my songs in C. Well, I got this old house. I rented it, it always felt really, um, natural to me. Like I felt like that was where I belonged. That was what I needed to do at that time. And then and then that's when uh, most of my first songs started coming. I just got really inspired by, by being out there wandering around and meeting all kinds of different people. I got lots of things in my cupboards. So, the, the, like I got Pretty Boy Floyd here. So I remember when I was doing that. That's a long time ago. That's an uh, old Woody Guthrie song. I'm, I'm, I'm taken by the storytelling tradition of like guys like Woody Guthrie and stuff like that. Her blanket, a battle to fight. And, and, and then there's certain rhythms I gravitate to. Like I really learned to love the country rhythm, you know? It's stuff that just kind of clicks along. Yeah, I feel that kind of music in my bones. I, I feel like I feel akin to it. I feel like I'm part of the whole like folk country lineage, you know. But I mean, I just uh, these are my people, you know. Like I, I I see eye to eye with them in the way they express themselves. So I just found eventually right around that era, which is also why it was a special era to me. I, I kind of felt like I was finding myself. And one thing I was finding was that I liked this particular kind of rhythm and gr groove. I, I, it's not like I'm like sat back one day. Like, what kind of music am I gonna play? You know, it's kind of, I'm more like I always, I always believe you don't. People don't do what they want to do. They do what they have to do. And I just kind of, that's that's the kind of music I was able to do to feel and not feel uh, uh, cliche or uh, uh, or disingenuine or like or pretend or anything like that. Like it, it feels right to me to play that. Like I can embody that kind of music. Say. But my baby got a house, and it on the south side of town, but it ain't too far away. And there's some good places here in Texas. I left traveling. I cr I cried like a baby for days because I I felt like it was the, the that was the most that was the most at home I ever felt in my entire life was wandering around and just uh, just going with the flow and going with the breeze. I felt better at that than anything I've ever ever tried to do in my life. Whether it's a sport or 
playing the guitar, you know, that I felt this is this is what comes so natural to me is 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 uh just wandering around. Like I cuz I cuz I just d don't need anything, you know? I mean, back then it was perfect. It was I, I was living I was I felt like I was like dying went to heaven. And uh and and one day it hit me that <clears throat> This is over. I mean, I I could just sense it. I could sense I wasn't going to see anyone, all these people again. That that this this whole kind of lifestyle was was ending, and that I I had to I, I was I felt like I was coming out of the womb and crying like a baby, and I literally I, I caught a ride out of Arizona to uh, to North Dakota, to to Montana from um, from these guys that I found with a, a, a Montana license plate. They didn't know what was wrong with me. And I said bye to everybody, and, I, and somehow I knew in my gut that this ride that was it. And uh, it, it, I, I was so overwhelmed by emotion, I couldn't even believe it. I just literally sobbed in the back of their car. They were like, you know, turning around and once in a while checking, are you all right, you know? And I just, I was just sobbing and sobbing for hours and hours. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I think what I was sobbing about is I knew that I was, I was leaving that that lifestyle behind, because I always knew I was going to go back into this other world I was kind of trying to depict earlier, where I felt like it was like two different worlds, and cause, because I, I, I felt a calling to record music, and uh, and I was already writing songs by then, and I, I just, my heart was telling me, you got to go back into the machine, and you got to get in, you got to get with the program, and you got to record music, because that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, but I ain't got 